that. Rejection is one of the biggest uh, fears of network marketers. Here's what's real. I don't like it either. I'll be so real. I hate rejection. I don't like it. Sometimes I want to cry. People are so mean. Nah, not really. But I think I have a way with words. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I think rejection is like one of the biggest fears. And for me, I don't like it. I really don't like getting hung up on or people being nicely rude. I don't know if you have ever been to a nicely rude. They really want to hang up the phone, but they're like, she seems pretty nice. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to kind of bluff her and be like, huh, ah, well, I don't have the money. Or, um, can you call me back on Monday? And then they don't answer the phone. Or, well, let me call you right back. You know, these very nice people. There's so many nice people in the world. But rejection is something that's kind of hard to digest and if you're not careful as a network marketer on a serious side of things it can kind of begin to mess with your self-esteem and make you think that maybe you're not a good salesperson or marketer depending on your niche or um it just begins to make you like get this kind of self-doubt and at one point in time i kind of started getting there because i was like well dang you know I'm just getting rejection over here and rejection over there. Like, am I not good at this thing? Then, think, can't remember who it was I was speak, speaking to. Um, and then I heard someone else, let's put it like this, say something about a similar experience. And it's one thing to hear yourself say it. Then you're like, yeah, I, I feel sorry for myself. I hear someone else saying it, like, what are you saying? And then I realized, oh, that's what I sound like. So, rejection is a part of the process. You kind of grow crocodile skin to it after a while. And you realize that it's just something that comes to the territory and the job. Just like doctors know that they can't save everybody's lives. Some people might die. Did I just say that? Facts of life. They know that they're going for 100% accuracy, but if they get 99%, they are lucky. I mean, I, I have doctor friends that have beat up themselves over a failed surgery, which they could have done nothing different. It's kind of like that. I might compare network marketing and medicine or healthcare, being a doctor, kind of. What I'm saying is every job has its territory. There are pros and cons to everything. And unfortunately, man up. This is our con. This is one of the things that we have to deal with. Rejection. So just say it with me. Rejection. 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 100% part of the process. And hey, what can I say? Let's do this. The more rejection that you get, the closer you are to your yes. I know you've heard that a thousand times. I'm still trying to believe it. But anyway, oh, time is going. All right, so let's move to the fifth and to me the most important uh, level of intimidation. It's not being intimidated by people or other network marketers or whether your upline likes you or your downline you know, is trying to, you know, take over, I don't know what that means, hmm. or speaking to people, which is a legitimate fear, and it's surely not the opinion of others, the most important is the fifth, self-inflicted intimidation, and I mean, this one is coming from the life coach part of me, not even the network marketer, I have had to deal with so many people that have self-inflicted problems, self-inflicted intimidation. And this is powerful because at the end of the day, even if you get all of these outside factors and things coming at you, if you do not give in to them or if you do not believe them, if they do not set root in your mind, in your subconscious more so, because that to me, that's where the danger lies. When it gets into your subconscious, and then it pops up at the weirdest times. If you do not let it in there, then guess what? It really can affect you. And I'm talking about thoughts that do not align with our goals and our mission and our vision. These are the most dangerous ones.
because then we start to see ourselves as failures. We start to measure success every step of the way. We start to overemphasize doubts and confirm negative affirmations in our head. And if you think about it, a lot of us do that from time to time, some more often than others, and it's so real. If our thoughts do not align with our goals, I can be like, yes, I am the next VP, I am the next, you know, top earner, I am the next. But if my thoughts, at the end of the day, when I'm thinking on a day-to-day -day basis, and when I'm really going through the process and really in the midst of the job, then, uh, yeah. You know, as a man thinketh, so is he. And it's still real to this day, as far as I know. From case study to case study, client to client, it's still true. Whatever you think is what you will become. Words have power. All right, so the best way to battle all of these intimidation would still come down to you. The power is in you. Uh, if you feel like you can't handle it on your own, get a coach. I'm all for life coaching. Yay! I wonder why. <laughs> get a life coach. Hey, I know someone. Hey, my hand is waving. You probably can't see it. Or get someone you trust. Uh, if you don't trust me, I don't mind. But if you feel like you don't need one, then you get this down. You can beat intimidation, but it starts with you. All right, now it's time for my favorite part of this podcast. Dun, dun, dun. Power play. All right, so this week's power play is going to be on credit. Now, don't get me started talking about credit. Some of you might know why, and if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. It's a secret. You're going to have to do a little research on me to find out why. I can talk about credit all day, all day, all day. Yeah. I can talk about credit. But here's why I'm going to talk about credit today. Today's power play is going to be reflective. I'm just going to ask you a simple question. How's your credit? Simple. I want you to think about it. How's your credit? If it's good, congratulations. If it's bad, you need to fix it. How do you fix it? I might know a guy. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little story. Um, maybe like oh, January? I don't think it was that early. Like August or so of this year. Uh, this guy added me on Facebook. It's like the funniest thing. So he added me on Facebook. And um, so I noticed that his like background picture was like his credit score. So I was like, what? We're posting credit scores on Facebook now? So he messaged, you know, like guys do, hey, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. You know, we went into all the small talk. Then um, he was like, so what do you do? I noticed that, you know, you work for yourself and this and that. And I was like, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, this is great. And I said, can I ask you something without you getting offended? Why do you have your credit score as your background? And then he's like, oh, well, I put it there because, um, you know, it's to attract the ladies. It's to show them that I'm responsible and, you know, that I am able to control my I'm in good financial status. And I was like, huh. So, he knows the power and importance of credit, clearly. But, um, dude, no wonder you're single. Are you kidding me? You don't get to attract good, decent, hard-working women by posting your credit score? What are you, stupid? Well, that's just my opinion. You're going to attract vultures and, I don't know, cougars and opportunists and prostitutes, I think. People that are going to look for people that have that, you know, good credit and good success to take advantage of you. I'm not saying don't put your credit score on Facebook, be proud of it, but come on, let's be real here. I don't think that him doing that was a good idea. I mean, you can comment below this post if you don't agree with me. I'm all for a rebuttal, but that's what I think. I think he's attracting the wrong set of people. That's why he is single. That's just what I'm thinking. 
but at the end of the day what I really like is the principle of this he understood the power of credit and that credit can attract the right person I didn't think his presentation was the right way but I think if he met the right person they would actually indeed be impressed by that outside of him posting on social media if he were to meet a nice young lady and be like hey so uh, my credit is good we can buy a house da -da 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 -da. you know I think he had the principles and the approach is yeah, kind of no dangerous in my opinion because I mean come on it's social media there are all kinds of people there but um, yeah I think 110% he had the principles down that at the end of the day there is power in credit and it can help in the right situation it can attract the right people you know he, he had a good idea just like I said the wrong execution of the idea mm, you ever been there hey not judging just saying so this week's power play simple effective how is your credit if this man knew the power of his credit and he was using it as his recruiting tool for girls then what about you what does credit mean to you how's your credit think about it this week and i think that's about it for today that's all i gotta say all right Hope to see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> see you next time.